Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Today, it's going to be only about Catherine. Well, maybe a little bit about Camilla. Maybe a little bit about the relationship with the King Charles, but mostly about Catherine. So Princess um, uh, Catherine, let's see what the cards can tell us about her, and I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So it's true. It looks like the royals are getting tons of attention, and uh, lots of us want to know what on earth is going on over there. Uh, of those with who not over there, by the way. So, uh, Princess Catherine, it seems like, you know, an easy situation. Uh, maybe it's stress. You know, why don't the rules just own up to whatever it is that's made her feel uh, bad, if that's what it is, that's caused her this internal strife, or whatever the real uh, diagnosis is for her crazy surgery, if that's what happened, because now we don't even know, did she really have a surgery? What's going on? Um, so, we're just going to do... I think a full uh, Celtic cross on Catherine, then we'll do some um, off-the-cuff uh, pulls for William and Charles, but all related around, you know, all this secrecy with Catherine. But, you know, before we do any of that, let's have just a moment of meditation. This is Catherine. So we're going to do a full Celtic cross um, just to drill down on Catherine. So my theory is, just to get it out of the way now, is that um, everything that's going on um, from the death of the Queen, before the death of the Queen really, the problem with uh, Harry and Meghan, uh, emotional stress, gut-wrenching, guts, uh, death of the Queen, gut-wrenching, more guts, um, breakup with Harry and Meghan, continuing. Then the um, illness of the king. So, and now the distance of William. So let's just do a full tilt across for Catherine just to see what's going on. Look at that. Well, you know, everything about a, a reading kind of for me it, it gives uh, some validity to the reading. And when the cards don't want to cooperate, the kind of this messy little spread here, then I think that has something to say. So we're going to get six cards and then another four. Uh, when we uh, do the first part of this uh, Celtic cross. So, Catherine. Everything the cards can tell us about Catherine. So, let's see. And I imagine that this will get into whatever this illness is. So the first is, look at this, the Nine of Swords. Swords of Truth, Justice, Truth, Rules, and Law. And the Nine of Swords is really being overwhelmed with all of this. Uh, and it's all a nightmare. You can see this person is waking up with a nightmare. They're holding a, a sword in their hand. And, uh, but she doesn't look particularly stressed, but it is a brunette like Catherine. So it's a nightmare. This, the, the signifier card of all of this for Catherine is that this period of her life right now, probably the last several years, has been a nightmare. The challenge to that then is the secrets being revealed, the moon card. Of course it is. Um, that's what's been the, the cause of the nightmare. The basis of this whole reading then is the Eight of Cups being offered something that you don't want. Listen. She, um, I don't know that she's ready to be this close to being the queen. I honestly think everything that's going on internally for her is caused by all of these worrisome issues. And in the past of this for Catherine is justice. Justice is gone. Okay. The balance, the equal uh, equality of the parties, all of this is in the past. Now it's about surviving and promoting the monarchy, regardless of justice. In the sky of this is a page of pentacles, and what does she have? She has only a, a page's worth of value in the whole scenario, although she will be the queen. The likely outcome is, it reminds me of the position of uh, Prince uh, Philip, even though he didn't, he wouldn't, wouldn't going to be the king, but he was going to be right next to the the queen. The likely outcome of the first part of this is that she will be the star. She's going to pull out through all of this. Her uh, reign with William as queen will be phenomenal. 
four more cards for Catherine. Um, you know, I'm not interested in why she's sick, why have they lied, all that doesn't matter. I want to know, Catherine, how is she going to weather all of this in the long term? So let's do uh, the very self of that question. Catherine, what about her in the long term? Seven of Wands. Uh, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. This is a person who is battling a lot of things happening to them at the same time with some authority. The uh, environment that that situation is in for Catherine is the Emperor. Of course it is. Her environment is about being under the thumb of the monarch. While at the same time being considered uh, next to. The uh, hopes and fears for all that is the King of Cups. She hopes to be able to bring up an emotional equivalent, because cups are emotion, an emotional equivalent to being a kingly cup. A king of cups that's the her hope okay and then rising to the occasion emotionally and then the final outcome for Catherine in this regard is the knight of cups so she moves up from a page uh, with a little bit of value to being a fighter for that emotional value I think this tells me that Catherine uh, is going to eventually come out of this beautifully but this hard uh, thing she's going through right now is very real and it's just gonna be part of her history and I'm sure if you went back and looked at other uh, consorts you'd find not unsimilar situations but now let's talk about William and we're just going to do I'm going to say four cards for William to see is he going to find a way to make things better for his wife because very in a very big way lots of this depends on William you know you have to take care of your family so William is he going to find a way to protect Catherine and uh, help get her by his side in the very best way possible. Four cards. Two cards wanted to come out together. Three and four. Four cards for Prince William. So you're going to find a way to pull his wife through this. Three of Wands, long term plans. Wands are action plans, forward movements, and it's the long term plans. This is what he has to keep focused and maybe what he has to bring his wife to understand. The next card for William in this regard is the Three of Pentacles. And the Three of Pentacles is very appropriate here. Pentacles are value. And this is building something together with others for public display. And it's interesting here that we have two women and a young man. I think this is Camilla and uh, Catherine and this is William. So building something together with public display and Camilla's going to turn out to be and it looks like maybe a bigger help than any of us might have thought because I was always on the Diana uh, wagon. Um, the next card up is the High Priestess. This gives us the authority to kind of make some assumptions and uh, the High Priestess comes to this game bringing all the graciousness, all the healing that you expect from a priestess, a High Priestess. And then the final card for William is the fool that new journey so the fool is the, the major arcana and it's significant of that new journey so all of this where he's going to be most helpful to catherine is at the beginning of his his journey when he becomes the monarch that's when he has a chance to kind of turn things around a bit he may surprise us all and then again he may not charles king charles the third is that right so king charles the third is he going to contribute to the better being of Catherine. Three cards. One, two, and three. So King Charles, is he going to contribute to the better being of Catherine? Phrase I made up. So four of wands. Uh, all, these are smaller celebrations onto something larger. Wands are plans. King Charles. Uh, temperance, finding a balance, King Charles, Page of Pentacles brings us right back to Catherine. Yeah, he's going to be instrumental in um, in uh, smallish celebrations on towards some sort of a, a balance between these two. And you see these two cups, so that's emotion, but a balance between the issues that to uh, in this transition when it eventually happens to bring Catherine up to a level of value. Although it's small as a page, it's still in the royal court. So Charles is eventually going to be there to help make this transition for William work. And that's when the healing really starts for Catherine.
hey, I'm going to show you the cards. No, hang on a minute. So this is the Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. Another great box. Nice magnetic clasp. Good, sturdy. This feels like really fine stationery would come in this box. So it's that kind of quality. And uh, it's this beautiful color around. It's got a nice little introduction on the back that talks about the tarot and, and why it's depicted the way it is. And uh, this artist's questions for the cards. There are actually 82 cards here. So this Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. This is a deck uh, that will instruct you how to determine your tarot blueprint and your personal birth card and annual card, shadow cards and karmic cards. And there are actually 82 cards in here instead of 78. And I'll, um, I'll show you, you know, how you can use them and I'll explain why, why that is even. So when we start with the booklet, and um, it's a nice, uh, large, uh, beautifully sepia-toned uh, kind of a booklet with all depictions of the cards in there, which is always really, really helpful. In here, there are uh, the author tells you a little bit about her and her family and her personal inspirations for coming to this deck, which are indeed very personal. And uh, so, a um, what happened here? It seemed like a friend. Um, in the guidebook, uh, the, her, her, she was encouraged by uh, a fellow seer, um, and I don't think she was a seer at the time, and an, an intuitive friend suggested that she could communicate with the, her relatives for the past. And she says she did that to interpret the images and the pictures of the faces of the loved ones represented in the deck. So tons of personal intention uh, went into the creation of cards, which I love. And even a dear friend of hers uh, named the deck. So, but the the deal with inside here is that there's two sets of cards, and I'll show you how that works. It's got a nice little pull here to help you get the cards out, but it comes with some extra cards in the pack, which I've tucked away under the ribbon, and I'll show you what that's about. Okay, in just a minute. So they're not, they're kind of actually a finish weight of card, but they've got a nice glossy finish and they've got a beautiful gold uh, gild on the edges. And uh, the pictures are nice and they're kind of showcased in a picture frame kind of thing and uh, lots of rich color. And it tells you under each of the cards how to use them. And then if you're going to use them as she suggests for uh, tarot, personal tarot cards or birth cards, it's got even numbers here and tells you how to use these numbers um, for that, uh, which is very interesting. But I really think you need the guidebook to kind of get through that. So what's going on here with the extra cards? So for uh, the Lover's card, which is um, the number six of the Major Arcana, it gives you three choices. I've got two of the choices here, and there's one choice that I've picked here, and it's in the stick somewhere. <laughs> but uh, so this choice right here is two, um, two men. This choice right here is two women. And then the choice that I chose to leave in this deck is a man and a woman. And just because that's what I'm, I see is more true to kind of all the tarot cards. But I would choose these uh, interchangeably if, if uh, you know, it seemed like that was the right thing to do for that read at the time. So, so that's uh, two extra cards that you need there for the lover's card, the number six. Then... For justice and strength, they've been numbered hyster historically uh, in each other's place uh, with various uh, tarot cards before a certain period and after a certain period. Uh, so, number and here you have three choices for justice and three choices for strength with just three extra cards, period, for the, the deck. I've got two of the choices here, justice and strength, and uh, uh, two of the choices uh, inside the deck. So it's four cards, actually. So, and what happens is, in some tarot decks, historically, justice has been numbered as number eight. But in some tarot decks, it's been numbered as number 11. So it gives you that choice. You can either number them in the, the one full suit of, of the Major Arcana as justice is number eight and strength is number 11, or vice versa, which is what I've chosen to do, you can have them labeled as strength number eight and justice number 11. So that, and that way you end up with four extra cards uh, completely uh, in this situation. So that was kind of a long explanation, but it's always good to lay them out here no matter how you do. And you know, you can just leave all the cards in the deck and just divine whatever comes up at the time, I suppose. You know, what's wrong with that? As long as you understand what you're looking at and, and if you get two justices in a draw, uh, be willing to, you know, etc. Or three lovers in one draw, be willing to decide how you're going to deal with that uh, as a rule of thumb before you start your readings. I would think it's a useful thing to do. Maybe you can just do it off the cuff. But these are, like I said, the relative tarot. Pretty cool.